normally we play on Thursdays, but that's because we have a very special episode here on the channel. But the reason we're not playing tomorrow is because we're trying to accommodate CJ. You all know what CJ's doing on the channel? And that is going to be our new hidden shrine of Tomoe Chan. Look at this. Oh, yeah, beautiful. That's tomorrow. March 10th, we've been gracious enough letting CJ take the helm. He's gonna run this channel right into the ground. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> who's who's playing in that one there, Bob? British Andrew, of course. Michelle, she'll be on the on the stream. Estelle, she played in Rank Amateurs. Dexter, a new uh, face on the channel. Andrew, right? You're playing in that one. Oh my! I think we have a debut oh, on the channel as well. Wow. I get to dance this time. You get to dance. You get to dance. Ah, you don't have to be all serious. Like I'm the DM. I don't have to. No fun for me. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Tabletop Bob. I'm your Bob this evening, but my name is CJ. <laughs> your Bob's down there. That's where Tabletop Bob is. Uh, so we are here for the Hidden Shrine of Tomoa Shan, where I will be your DM. Bobby is playing tonight. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell button for all the notifications on the channel. Got that out of the way real quick and real fast. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff coming up on the channel. So Bobby, why don't you tell us about what's going on in the channel? I'm doing this intro oh. like really going fast. on a speed race here. Yeah, it's excellent. Running through this. I love it. I love it. You've done great, CJ. So far, so far, so good. Ten out of ten is what I, what I say. Right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Yeah, this is uh, Tabletop Bob. My name is Bob, uh, and this is Tomoe Chan. I'm so excited to finally be a player. This is going to be a campaign that goes on for the next however many weeks we need to finish it, but it's going to be alternating Thursdays with Keep on the Borderlands, so that's exciting. And if you're new to the channel, like CJ said, please do subscribe. I have a couple of ongoing campaigns uh, that are 5e uh, D&D. That would be The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. That's on Tuesday nights. As I mentioned, keep on the Borderlands, the old school meets new school module. That's going to be on Thursdays opposite this game. And I have Supernatural 20, my horror-themed one-shot campaign where every episode is a contained story. And that's usually on a once-a-month schedule. So uh, lots to see here. And I have other videos. So please check them out. CJ, back to you. Great. Thank you so much for all of those updates, Bob. That's great. Looking forward to all of those other things coming up on the channel. Keep on the Borderlands is great. Uh, while beyond the wishlight, the the, uh, uh, the series on. Uh, you don't have to lie. You don't have to lie. <laughs> I don't have to lie. Okay. Well, uh, once once you get to more descent with Vernus, that's where I'm at. Once, <laughs> once I'm waiting for that next one. I they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Uh, so we are here for the Shrine of Tomoe Shan. I am gonna just talk a little bit about the adventure. So this is Module C one. You can't really see it. C one from 1980 i have the original book right here but we are being we're playing through the uh tales from the yawning portal version for fifth edition we're not going to be going back to second edition for this one or first edition i think this was second mm -hmm. edition ad and d uh whatever version but i have my original copy here that has all of the fun uh, room descriptions and stuff, and this wonderful packet of original artwork. Ooh. The uh, 15 additional artworks that we're going to be getting to as we get through them. Uh, so that'll be fun to see that original artwork for some people. And because some of it's a lot more interesting than what's in the fifth edition book, it's really nice black and white illustrations. And this was originally for those who don't know, designed to be run as a tournament module. And what that means is that players were given two hours to complete this module at the time, and they were meant to try and get through it as fast as they could and make as few mistakes as possible. So That's gonna definitely going to be us. Few we'll mistakes see. as possible. <laughs> and we're going to be going really, really fast as well, not messing around at all. And you only have two hours to do it, so... Great. Uh, right. and done. No exposition. Will be, yes. <laughs> no exposition and two hours. 
But uh, before we get to that, let's introduce our characters. We'll start to my, is that my left? Uh, okay, well, wherever I'm pointing is Estelle. <laughs> start there. Hi, I'm Estelle. Uh, playing Amada today, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Like a big old blue woman. Let's go. <laughs> and and what a uh, class and yes, and, class uh, and I am going to be a ruin knight fighter. Yes, um, Eric Ganassi, and I'm really ready to cause trouble. Awesome. Great. Uh, moving down, we'll go to Dexter. Hello, uh, I am Dexter. I am playing Vogos Ironwall. I am playing a mountain dwarf barbarian, specifically the ancestral guardian uh, barbarian. And uh, I'm really looking forward to my first time on the channel. Welcome, Dexter. Welcome, welcome. welcome. A great adventure to start off on the channel with. Moving on to... Andrew. Hello, my name is Mr. Morecliff. Morecliff. <laughs> I am a human wizard, but more so a gentleman. I look forward to completing this adventure with you. A gentleman with war magic? War, war magic, yes. Okay. Uh, moving on to Michelle. Ooh. Thank you, CJ. Hello, everyone. I am Michelle. Um, I play on our Supernatural 20 campaign as Bear. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm wearing the shirt, you guys. I got oh, the cup. Here's I got the cup. Nice. Go team. Yeah. Represent. <laughs> so tonight, however, I will not be playing Bear. Instead, I will be playing a brass dragonborn paladin um, who goes by the name Heck and is gender neutral. And Heck uh, follows the Oath of Conquest path. Um, and so Heck is a paladin, yes, but a very fierce paladin. Danger paladin. Nice. So that's my vibe for tonight. And of course, that leaves us with only one person left, the tabletop Bob. Who are you playing as tonight? I had a feeling you were going to do that. I, I had a feeling you were going to just avoid me <laughs> right till the very end. <laughs> But, Gotta save the best for last. Well, then you definitely should have put Michelle or Estelle, somebody, anybody but me. Definitely not Dexter, though. Because it was good you yeah, put him second. Not. It was very good you put him second. I am playing Bruna. Hola, everybody. My name is Bruna. I am a devout follower of the Holy Trinity, which is Tyr, Torm, and Ilmater. I am a skilled person yes i am for my church i would do many things like identify objects investigate things but i am branching off on my own i want to be an adventurer and explorer even though i may not be prepared for it when i was a young girl i was picked on so i'm looked to get some revenge you know on the schoolyard kids would bully me and uh well through the blessings of the gods i was able to use my mind to defend myself I did have a rough childhood, as I mentioned, though, because, you know, it scared people that I was able to harm them using my thoughts. And, well, the songs they sang were not very nice. We don't talk about Bruna, na, na, na. It was, it was terrible. And, you know, I, I would like to put all of that behind me and move on with my adventuring career and making a new name for myself. Uh, make my family proud. The Calderon family. So, that's Bruna. Great. We don't talk about Bruna. That's right. The songs oh, no. they sang. All right. By the way, I I will say one thing more, CJ. Uh, yes. You know, Bruna's. I mean, she's she's a strong adventurer, obviously, but she's uh, you know on the frailer side. She's the rogue. Uh, and you know, I just want to remind you, there's a lot of names on this T-shirt, <laughs> and a lot of them are crossed off. In fact, some of them need to get crossed off. Sorry, Julius. Rest in peace. Uh, but <laughs> Edmund is not crossed off. No. So I'm just reminding you. I'm just putting that out there. Rogues Edmund is not crossed off. Rogues are crafty. So that's it. It's my only only time I'm going to say it. <laughs> well, uh, well, I got to get into dungeon master mode. So I think, uh, is that 
dungeon master mode? Does that look? Is. Does that background <laughs> look right? Oh, look at that. Is that? Oh my Pretty gosh. Legit. Your laundry just, or my laundry just appeared behind you. My yeah, laundry room. It's, yeah. It's, I it's love how it. You, it's, it's the DM room, right? That's oh how you my. Have to do it. You have to yes. DM That's a strong here. magic. Nah, Look at that. Well, I'll. <laughs> now we'll, uh, we'll be whisked away to a Wait, new just, magical land. Just move your head a, a, a little bit. No, no, just... move my head. <laughs> <laughs> DJ cast my minor mood. illusion. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. That's, what, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> that's it. Wanted to do that, but uh, we'll be whisked away to a magical land of a uh, uh, Delaware, maybe. <laughs> oh hi, I'm in Delaware. <laughs> but let's uh, we'll get serious and head into the dungeon. Ooh. Go. All right. So let us let's begin the hidden shrine of Tamoishan. Uh, I'll just read this. This is the tournament background introduction for uh, everyone. Your party is lost. You should never have abandoned the ship and struck out into the marshes, but your pursuers were closing on your trail and it seemed the only way. Stumbling onward through the fens, your party makes for higher ground ahead. As you cross the ridge, the sun sinks below the horizon and night comes. Breathless, the party drops to the ground and you try to catch your wind with a welcome rest. Somewhere behind you comes the sound of distant shouts Scrambling back to you, your feet, you force your way further into the brush, past great carved stones which lie overturned on the ground. A full moon rises, sending moonbeams and ghastly shadows to flicker through the branches. Ahead in the woods, a light glows and seems to beckon, perhaps a shelter for the night. Through thorn, though thorns tear and impede your progress, the source of illumination is reached at last. Before you is a clearing, there is an ancient ruin, a worn and overgrown pyramid fills the courtyard, shining in the moonlight, seeming only almost brighter than the moon itself. A refuge, perhaps. Tomorrow, with daylight, the party may explore, but tonight, you must have rest. The sun has risen, and after a hasty council, the preparation and party gathers up their equipment and starts towards the pyramid temple. You tread carefully across the cracked and overgrown flagstones, stepping and over fallen and shattered pillars, pushing aside vines and briars as the party approaches the temple and the, the sound of crashing through the underbrush comes from behind you. Turning around, the party glimpses men moving through the woods towards the clearing. Then, the earth shudders and gapes, open be shudders and gapes open beneath the party's feet and you are falling amidst a roar of collapsing masonry and dust. Dust fills the air, and the sunlight disappears, and the darkness swallows you. That is where we begin. We just fell? We just fell. Oh my... Ah. <laughs> into this room here. As I move you guys. To a really cool three-point landing. Superhero landing? All right, nice. you guys all on the map. You guys are all in the lower right. You should be able to see that. I don't know if you guys. No. There. Do our tokens are they your, on there? Your tokens are on there. Oh, I, I see. I got them mid, far right. Yeah, mid. Far mid right. Oh yeah. Oh wow, yeah. it's yeah, yeah, this is very a, big. Okay. This is a very <laughs> large map, and I don't know that you can see the. Can you see the compass rose below that? No, you can't. Um, is it not north? Is is up? North is not up. North Ooh, is okay. left. So that is why uh, I was trying to expose the compass rose. North is left. I'll put an arrow here. Yes. How's that? Nope. That, that's great if that, that helps you guys. However you want. All right. Uh, so here you are in the first room. You are in a long, narrow chamber running east-west. That's why. East, west, not north, south. In the center of this apartment is a domed shape on the floor. In the east wall is a blank faced stone door. The west end of the room is blocked by fallen stone and rubble, apparently the result of a collapse. The two side walls appear to have several niches cut out into them. 
The shape in the center of the chamber appears to be a small alcove protected by a half dome with the open end facing towards the door in the east wall. This alcove is set in a recessed, shallow, tiled well one foot deep and ten feet wide. The alcove itself is four feet high. The recess contains some sort of display. The display appears to be a diorama depicting... Oh, well, if you want to look, I can tell you what it is. But, uh, if you guys want to search around this room or tell me what you guys want to do. You just is everyone want... okay? I want to <laughs> cast light. I cast okay. light on my staff so I can see. Great. Oh, you thank can see. goodness is... you did that. Oh, I thought I'd gone blind. I can only see five feet, though, in my <laughs> roll 20 view. Yeah, same. Yeah. Ah, we need a light source. That's right. So you cast light? I cast light. I'm, can you edit that, CJ? Can you make him yes. have a, a brightness? Yes. Lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Token emits bright light. What is it, 30 feet? 40 feet. 40 feet, wow. I think 20 feet bright, 40 feet dim. No. 20 feet. And while CJ's doing that, I'll just say a couple things. Since I am running the stream on my computer, right. I'm obviously in, in the player mode, and I can't see all the stuff that CJ has, which means that maybe for better, uh, the viewers will also only be seeing what the characters see. The only difference is that I have access to everyone's token, so all your visions collectively are what the viewers are going to see. It so they at least can see all your tokens and what's in the rooms most likely and it should be on explorer mode which is the um like fog of war mode right oh, okay so as we move it'll as clear move, and i think things should open up but i'm not sure if that's gotcha for everybody can everybody see everyone else's token or no yes okay I, so i just moved my token and i lost sight of everyone like i have the fog of war effect where i can see oh you can yeah, see like, I can see the room, but I can only see the other tokens when I'm like right next to them. Okay. Mm. Gotcha. I, um, you need uh, some vision. I'm gonna give everyone. Uh, yeah. So actually, like... surprisingly, we have a party of very few dark vision uh, characters. Like Dexter has dark vision, but yes, I'm human. Andrew's human. Uh, Janasi and. And Dragonborn don't actually get dark vision, right? No. Yeah, unless you're one of the other. Sp uh, I think the the fire one does, but yeah. that's it. Because of my dark vision, when the light goes on, I'm just like, oh, I'm blind. The light. <laughs> it's too much. It was probably your fault for causing this cave-in. What are you trying to call me, fat? No, you stomp around so loud. That's just how us dwarves be. All right. You're trying right, to insult get... my culture? No, I mean my no heritage. Harm. I mean no harm. What's wrong with stomping, huh? <laughs> guys, guys, we're in a predicament already. Should we really be fighting with each other about, you know, body images and all that? Is this a predicament or is this an opportunity? We may be able to find magical items or treasure. Oh my god, treasure! So, yeah, what are you guys I, uh, looking at doing? This, Just... this well in the center fascinates me. I would like to okay. examine it. All right. So this display appears to be a diorama depicting a hunting party of almond hmm? warriors in feathers and deer hide garments. In a mountainside scene, some have pulled down a stag with a, the aid of a dog. Another group is cleaning a small mule deer, and others have cornered a panther with their spears. A scout watches the panther from an outcropping above. He holds a metal staff with a loop on its end. It looks like a shepherd's crook. Hmm. The three niches on both the northern and southern walls are five feet wide and about three feet off the floor. So there's these six little niche. niche niches niches snitches niches stitches what <laughs> all right i'm gonna approach a... this yeah, niche ahead. the cent central niche on the south wall i'm gonna look at look at it closely do i notice anything unusual 
Uh, you are going to E. Uh, in the display that depicts the creation of the world. Uh, they're stylized much more. They're more non-human style uh, style figures. Um, and yeah, these figures, a god adorned in green quetzal feathers is mixing ash with blood to form sculptures of a man and woman while four towering figures painted red, black, blue, and white are standing about a fire committing suicide with their daggers. Two oh. smaller figures are ringed by the floor. The modest pimply one is being consumed by the fire while the large er, while the braggart lord of snails cowers in fear. That's on this uh, little... That's in that one, yeah. Niche? Oh. Niche? Hmm. Fascinating. What about this south-easterly niche? One A. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yes. One A. That one. <laughs> this one. Uh, it's a river scene of a dozen commoners gathering rushes, fish with nets, and carving a dugout. So we've got fishermen, we've got human sacrifice. All the Fun good thing. stuff. Mm -hmm. I like where this is going. Uh, I wonder if there was a marriage ceremony niche. A marriage ceremony one? Yeah, so I will examine this one. Southwest. Perhaps one C. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> is that how it works? Uh, the scene is of tribal warfare, involves 20 tribal warriors in combat. Mm. There are uh, one side of 10 warriors painted black, while another side is done in red. Can I check the door? I see there's a door to <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing, though? I'm getting Absolutely. a little freaked out. There's a lot of exposition going on. I'm a yeah. little, No, I'm a little freaked out. There's some creepy things in these niches, and uh, I'm gonna while the group is looking at these shrines, I'm gonna go and, and see the door. I wanna since I'm in a unfamiliar dark place, I'll be uh I wanna examine this door, look around, see if I can see any you know, door handle and make sure it's safe. So the door is carved with a sun symbol and appears to open into the room. There are hinges on this side of the it on this side of the room of the door and scratches on the floor. There's no visible lock or handle on it although a slight gap stretches across the top of the door. Eight holes seem to have bored into the door. They're about an inch in diameter, but nothing can be seen through them. The door seems to be fairly thick. The lintel is arched with a keystone on the top. And if you want to give me a perception check also, there might be more. Yeah, let me see if I can, if I can notice anything about this. All right, we're starting off real <laughs> strong. <laughs> starting off Ooh. real strong. That'd be a nat 20, uh, 28. We got good things for the night. You notice that there's a keyhole along the side of the door. Ah. Uh, Vogos, look. Come. I need your dwarven eyes. My eyes? What? Look, a keyhole. It's hard to see. Where's it's the... right here. I look intently. I know Where? dwarves. I know dwarves have good stone cunning. Perhaps there might be a key located in this room. But where? That's a good question. I tell the group all the information as well. I kind of say it at an audible level that they could all hear it. I, I look back and uh, look at the well. It is a well, right? It's a, uh, it's like a stone pedestal on a, like raised platform. So it's it's a it says it's a it's a half dome structure. Hmm. Half dome structure. So like a diorama. See, yeah, it's a diorama on like so. Hmm. This is kind of a half of a dome. I'm drawing on it. Like a nativity then, scene. Yeah, and then this this front part is just kind of a flat scene of. Uh, a diorama in the alcove. Uh, Twelve tribal warriors, one scout, a mastiff, 
and a panther. Uh, and I'll reread the description as you look over it. Uh, the display appears to be a diorama depicting a hunting party of omen warriors, uh, depicting a hunting party in feathers and deer hide garments. In the mountainside scene, some have pulled down a stag, another uh, with the aid of a dog, another is cleaning a small mule deer, while others have cornered a panther. A scout watches the panther from an outcropping above. He holds a metal staff with a loop in its end, it looks like a shepherd's crook. And actually, I think I have a handout for you of this little thing. Let's see, player handouts. Scenes and locations. This one, show to players, show to everyone. Oh! Oh, that's that cute. Guys, in the uh, diorama. Mm. I will go and try and take his stuff. Okay, you take his staff. I examine the star. What's it, it made of? Its composition. It's made of metal. Um, it's shaped as it is. Uh, but yeah, if you give me a give me give me just a simple investigation check on this on this. Seventeen. You think it might be a key? It might hmm. be a key. Is new. You broke up there. I couldn't hear you. Oh, the key. The key. Yeah. But let's look at these dioramas first. I. I these dioramas are troubling. I'm going to examine this one. On the west, uh, north wall? Yes. Uh, sorry, the, which one? This one. I believe it's the center one on the north wall. Uh, okay. That one. Twelve commoners are engaged in farming, planting maize and harvesting wheat. Five tribal warriors stand guard and a there's a priest in a bird costume blessing the fields. Priest in a bird costume, huh? Mm-hmm. You don't see that every day. What do you see, Heck, in your diorama? This CJ room south yes. wall. Yes. Yeah. So I'm I'm just staring intently into this scene of tribal warfare of a group of kind of red painted people going to war against a tribe of like people covered in black paint and as I stare at this scene of warfare I'm just quietly weeping to myself this reminds me of where I come from so I'll meander towards the door just glancing at this diorama in the northeast you see Heck crying and he's like I'm going to the door (laughs) (laughs) Uh, thanks Warcliffe this one portrays a temple upon a tiered pyramid. Commoners are bringing offerings of gold and jade before the, uh, before the temple stands a, uh, a commoner with a snake around him. Uh, are three costumed warriors, one dressed as a winged serpent holding a spear, the other is dressed as a bear with razor claws, and a third represents a coyote holding a torch. There are also several stone statues of the gods and bits of gold and jade kind of sprinkled about. I assume that the rubble is... We cannot excavate the rubble and get out of here that way, like the way we came in. You can certainly try. I don't have the... the the strength for that. I'll try. All right, let's go. I'm going to try to clear the rubble by myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, any attempt to dig upward in the rubble? <laughs> uh, I almost got it. I got almost got it. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, need help? You need help over there? Teamwork you... is always good. Oh no. 
as you try. <laughs> Helping. <laughs> Sorry, CJ. What was that? Uh, as you try and dig, you start pulling at some of the stones and stuff starts falling, but uh, more and more stuff falls and each of you takes one damage as stuff falls on you. <laughs> Rocks fall. We all Rocks die. fall and you don't quite die, but you each take one bludgeoning damage as more and more of the rocks uh, come down on you. Oh, this oh, does not really... seem like a way out. <laughs> I, I do not think we should try this way any longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> oh, these... out of nowhere. While my companions are doing this, yeah. this, this task, I, I take the key I, and I try and open the door. Because I said this was going to be hard. Uh, give me <laughs> dexterity saving throws also, Michelle and Estelle. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Oh! With two. You took my luck! <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, heck is fine. Um, but, uh, Amada, <laughs> you are going to take a little bit more damage. Uh, Estelle, what's Amada with you? <laughs> Ooh, nine more damages. The rubble oh, no. collapses. Oh dear God! And it, <laughs> I mean, oh, I dios mio. You. It bury you are engulfed oh. by the rubble, and you are trapped. Oh my! <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right. You are you are trapped in the rubble. Still. <laughs> Can I? You cannot breathe. Vogos. Oh, oh, I I look oh, over at the <laughs> fool that just got trapped in the rubble, and I'm like, Ugh. and I and I run over to uh, try and help them out. Over here. I try and pry help. away at the rocks. And uh, pull whichever one was closer. Which one was closer? I guess. Uh, I think I'm the only one trapped. trapped. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm only, good. Yeah, only Amada is trapped right now. Oh, only Amada trapped. Then I'll pull. Try to pull out Amada. Okay, give me a strength check. I a die in the, in the first room. <laughs> you just suffocate check under for the you. rubble. Yes. <laughs> oh no! The biggest killer is poor architecture. I'm the foreign rubble, though, Goss. Ooh. Ooh, unfortunately, you start digging and digging and digging, but there's some of these stones are just too heavy for you to get out of the way. What? Uh, get him out! Get out of can, there! Can, can I? Can I uh, use levitate? Cast levitate on like the biggest rock on me, maybe? Uh, oh. Yeah, I don't. Does levitate work on objects? That works on That's objects. That's a great correct? question. Uh, it should. Uh, uh, I I uh, yell out, I need help over here. An uh, object, yes, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And I try to pull Amada out, just, just grabbing a hand and yanking. Yeah. Uh, you can you can give me a, a strength check also. With with advantage with the levitate. Yeah, we'll give you advantage for because now you're helping with Dexter. Uh, sorry, with uh, Vogos is there, and everyone's kind of panicked to try and get. Okay. Ah, uh, Amada, I'm here for you. Rick, help me. There you go. That's uh, enough. You're oh able to. You're able to clear the rubble and get Amada safely out of the rubble. Oh my God! I like owe you my life now. You're telling me this is enough adventuring for me. You want to call it, guys? I just want to bed down for the night. What do you say? I open the door. <laughs> <laughs> there may be magical items, as I said. Before I need he opens... to gain in strength and power. <laughs> well, okay, I guess I'm stuck there. I can't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm new to this. 
This is my first time. How do I open doors? I ah. You should be able to go into the... Uh, the, the dynamic lighting, right? The dynamic lighting uh, view, and then delete it. Yep, perfect. Okay. Oh, jeez, I moved everything. Oh. I think you moved the light. Oh. I moved, like, the whole thing. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. Good. Yeah, I mean, I, I see it weird little gray past the wall, but I don't see much. You could probably see in our view on our zoom. I see yeah. just a tiny yeah, bit. Yeah, things were, things were moving back and forth. From the gotcha. It's all good. I think I got everything back together. I say, everyone, please, gather round. We have to be very careful in these sort of temples. I, oh. I fear that wandering off on our own without the rest of the group to support each other may be, may be a very bad idea. Uh, I move. I move. Yeah, forward. yeah. And I walk <laughs> by him. I call Heck as my buddy for safety here. Yes, I think the I, three of us need I to... I link arms with Amada. <laughs> I, I believe the three of us need to stick together. It seems the others may be a bit brash, but don't go grabbing rocks and things like that. That oh, could be, be fine. I've done this so many times. So long as you have a group to help out, it's all good. I am a very worried person. You have to understand. I. Uh... Well, then you can worry for me. Okay. All Let's right. go. This is very bad for my anxiety. You know, I hear that a lot. <laughs> uh, is everyone moving through the door into this yeah. chamber? As we get to the door, uh, I would like to inspect. There was that little. You said a little. Uh, space at the top. Uh, yeah, just um. There was a lintel arch with a keystone at the top. That was where uh, the keyhole I believe was. Oh, okay, at the top of the door. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, so then we can we can definitely uh, move on. Yeah, we could definitely move on. Uh, is All it right. wise, Mr. Morcliffe, to have you going in the front? That's an excellent point. A man of I your stature should have someone leading the way. I click my fingers, and mage armor appears on my body. Ah, okay. I have magical protections. But my friends, I think you should go first. <laughs> Do not worry, puny one. We will keep you safe. And I step forward. Yeah, they're great at that. I, I, I was actually going to suggest that perhaps I I go first. But what about your anxiety? <laughs> when, when I don't have to worry about others, I'm, I'm actually much happier. Well, okay. If it's all right with all of you. It's you fine. Yeah. I, I am going to also use a one of my um, an ability that I have here. I'm going to use uh, so I find the name of it. I know what it does, but I just want to find what it's called so I can... Uh, tell you so we can refer to it as that but now I now obviously when I want to find it I can't uh, but it is nope not there great I'll find it though but basically I can communicate with you all telepathically using oh. my uh, psychic yeah, powers it's, it's one of your side bolstered knack things right you it can, is yeah it's yeah, once uh, per long rest you can talk to six people no not six and and literally, now that I'm looking for it, is why I, I can't find it. Um, but it's, uh, of course, here. Yeah. Yeah, I really can't find it now. Uh, but anyway, so I can I can talk to, I believe, I believe it is up to two of you uh, per dice. And I'm going to I'm going to pick two of you and I can speak to you perfectly. You don't need to understand my language. You just have to um, be within one mile of me. And we can communicate in perfect telepathy. Um, so that that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use... It's a free the first time I do it. And then I have to spend a psychic dice 
anytime I want to do it afterwards. Uh, well, it's up to your proficiency bonus. What's your proficiency bonus? It's three. Okay, so three people. Okay, okay, got you. Yeah, so when I was... Uh, yeah, exactly. When I first got it, it would be two, and now it's... Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's three people, um, and... Yeah, and you don't have to spend the die the first time you use correct. it. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So anytime I want to spend it afterwards, I would have to do it. It's going to last the number of uh, hours based on the dice. So I'm going to roll roll that dice, um, and it's a d8 yeah. at this level. And who are, your, who are you communicating with? I'm going to do Mr. Morecliff. I believe uh, communication with the wizard is probably good. And then I probably take a, a, a liking to Heck, because you are also a, a pure paladin, so I, and I'm a devout follower of, of the gods, the pantheon, so I will I'll communicate with Heck and Mr. Morecliff telepathically. Oh, I get one more, actually. And uh, Amada. Uh -huh. Vogos rubs me the wrong way. There. <laughs> And I'll say, if you don't mind, I will. Uh, I will journey on ahead. If there's any dangers, I will. I will let you know. I'm speaking to you telepathically. Oh my God! I can hear your voice, but your mouth isn't moving. Uh, Vogos, I'm sorry, but right now <laughs> the gods are only allowing me to speak with three telepathically. Uh, obviously, one for Torm, one for Tyr, one for Helm, or uh, Ilmaid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want your silly voice in my head anyway. Okay, we are agreed upon then. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go very slow pace down this hallway. Okay. And I want to be actively looking for things on the wall or things on the floor. And I'll go as slow as I feel comfortable. Uh, do okay. you want me to make checks or do you want me to just use my passive? I will, I will have you make a check, but I will just describe this room. The stone walls of this corridor are carved to resemble a stack of bamboo-like logs. The passage slopes down from a single door on the western leg, the lintel of which, which has been crafted to represent a stylized cavern entrance. It leads to a double doors of beaten bronze worked to resemble a forest of seaweed. So this is a forest of seaweed, and this is the, the door you just came through, which is uh, looks like a uh, cavern entrance. And then as you are walking down the hallway, uh, give me a perception check as you're checking for everything. 22. Okay, wow. I gave you those those goggles. No, no, I, the eyes of my nude seeing, I actually, mm -hmm. I, that's only investigation. So this is just oh, my normal. It. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, as you travel along, the hallway, uh, can I get with you guys? Yeah, when you guys move all to about here. Oh, gotcha. This is where you notice a pressure plate on the floor. In the two squares ahead of me? Uh, well, it's in the it's center. In these, it's in, like, yeah, it's it's around this area. It's a little bit ahead of you, like maybe one. Oh, it's, it's a. Oh, it's further ahead. Gotcha. Yeah. It's about there. Are there? So are these the, the uh, these little uh, depressions? They're the, the the scene you described, or? Uh, no, the the doors are here. I uh, the uh. Uh, other side. It it looks the same as the scenes uh, I described. The um, stacked logs. Gotcha. Uh, but there's. You, you definitely notice a pressure plate right in front of you. Everyone. Mm -hmm. And I say to Vogos out loud, step back a bit. And I say to everybody else, I believe there's something here on the floor that could harm us. Let me inspect it. Is it a pit trap? I love those. I sure hope not. Uh, but I don't want to cause harm to any of you if if it goes wrong. So maybe take a few steps backwards. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, I try. You, you are a noble soul. I will protect you in case of danger. I just step back. Um, I do have a 10-foot pole. I don't know if I want to use it at this very moment. I think I might want to, and it's probably sticking up <laughs> at my back. Um, 
but I, I think I want to just, like, carefully inspect the floor plate and see if I can see what maybe the, like, if I can gauge how how much weight would do it if a per if a person stepped on it, or if we could, perhaps, clear it if it's not too big. Um, or, or if there's any other things that would be relevant by by searching it. Yeah, uh, yeah. You check it out. It seems like it would probably hold the weight of two people, but any more than that would definitely trigger. Uh, it, it would trigger whatever it is meant for. Okay. I'll uh, report that to the group and say one at a time. One at a time. Walk. Walk briskly. And I'll move past it. Is that uh, out loud or? <laughs> out loud, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I'll move to the door. I will follow and I'll, I'll mumble to myself briskly, briskly, briskly. But I'm like also like a 300 pound dragon born. So like, stomp, stomp, oh, stomp, oh, stomp. Oh, oh, <laughs> Making my way over. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, so, okay. so you make should... it over safely. You're fine. Yeah, I'll I'll tell uh telepathically to Amada, perhaps just maybe you should wait back. There's getting it's getting a bit crowded. Aw, fine. I see the sea uh, phone door. Yes, you're at the at the sea at the sea door. Vogos, you Seaweed. you coming up? What are you doing? I. I just walk over. <laughs> Shuffle past. Move over. Okay. Right. You each Should we... individually walk across the platform? Yep. Should we op open the door, everybody? Yeah. Yes. Is just there a open it. Was there a handle? Uh, the door doesn't seem to have... It, it, it'll just open... Uh, like it pushes up it or something? Yeah, it just pushes open. Uh, All right. So, you open the doors. This room is... Right, you're all walking in now? I, I guess at the door we would look and see what we okay. can see. Uh, yeah, you can see what you see. There's... Uh, this room is constructed of large stone blocks, buttressed in the corners. The walls are wet and slimy, and mud covers most of the floor in a thin coating. That's kind of what you gather from where you are. Does it, uh, sea foam? Does it smell like the sea? Uh, no, it doesn't smell like the sea. It's just kind of slippery and muddy. I'll say to Moorcliff telepathically, should we enter? As he says that, I'm like, get to move on. And I uh, take a few steps inside. Seems he has. <laughs> Did you, you find any traps? <laughs> what? Trap. Trap. <laughs> no, 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 no traps. But. Uh... Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. Where's your buddy? Right, as you <laughs> enter the room. Uh, as you enter the full room, the room is constructed of large stone blocks, but buttressed in the corners. The walls are wet and slimy, and mud covers most of the floor in a thin coating. To the east and west may be seen stone doors recessed in the wall, and to the north, a set of stairs leads down. In the center of the chamber sits a large, polished boulder amid a pile of smaller, rounded rocks. The boulder is five feet tall and colored brown with dark streaks and spots. Leaning against it is what appears to be a bamboo staff. In the mud around the base of the boulder is a moving shape, looking like a crayfish. It is facing you and seems to be aware of your presence. And this crayfish is kind of moving back and forth, like snapping its uh, its tentacle, uh, its its claws at you, and it's it's speaking in some strange language. It's like wash 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 wash. Do you understand him, anybody? Uh, this, this, this I creature. don't speak crab. We both have scales, but he is not of my kind. 
<laughs> uh, Bogos, be very careful. Under under my breath, I go. I've never had crab before. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Intelligent uh, life must eat it. <laughs> this is a this is an animal. Does it look like it? It looks like an animal, right? Yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a, a crayfish. It's kind of lobster shaped. It's Can I make claws, a nature check? It's... See if I know anything about this species. Sure. Can I walk in and try to mimic its movements? Four. Yeah, you don't, you're not really sure. You're not. You've never been to the southern United States. You don't know a whole lot about crayfish, crawdads, that kind of thing. But uh, this thing looks like a lobster. A, a tiny little, like a, a large, tiny lobster, if that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a large crayfish. Uh, I'm gonna lots of, lots of legs. I'm gonna while keeping my like I'm gonna like basically like sidestep. I don't know. I'm gonna keep my face to it so I don't turn my back to it, and then like try to move in to the center like this way, mm -hmm. and then try to like figure out what's going on with these little rocks and this big rock right here. Uh, oh, what's going on with that? I, I'm just like looking at the rocks. Like, why are these little rocks here? It just seems to be a pile of rocks for all that you uh, can tell from just looking at it. If you want to make a perception check, uh, it might be able to tell you more. Uh, actually, you can make a, a, an intelligence check. You can make a nature check. Nature or yeah, make a nature check, and I'll nature. tell you more. Ooh, let's go. Then four. Uh, 17. 17, yeah. So this pile of rocks, I, uh, I mentioned there was a bamboo staff uh, leaning up against it. But uh, when you get a little bit closer and you kind of really uh, take a look, uh, that's not a bamboo staff. It appears to be the leg of some kind of creature. Perhaps it is something's home. So there's there's two creatures. Upon learning that it's the leg of a creature, I got I just tense up a little bit more. I'm like I'm eyeing down this this lobster crayfish crab looking thing. Uh, he's gonna start making sure it don't get the you. jump on me. Uh, he's going to start approaching you because you kind of entered the room and he's going to start trying to snap at you and is, is speaking some strange language at you as he snaps. Like, again. Hey, stranger danger, keep back. Uh, can I try to yell at the crab and try to intimidate it? Oh. Sure. <laughs> Uh, okay, where's my intimidation? <laughs> this ought to go well. Mm. Bad crab! Bad! Get down! Well, uh, yeah, you, you, you draw his attention as you, you enter into the room. You're entering into the room, yes? I this snap is, menacingly at it. This is you, right? This one as you enter? Hey! Uh, yeah, so as you enter the room and try and scold the crayfish it, it draw you draw its attention um you don't intimidate him into uh backing away from you but your anger and words kind of do elicit a reaction from him and everyone's gonna roll initiative now uh, I, I know i should have done comprehend languages <laughs> did you have it prepared yeah <laughs> Oh, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's just watching us. He's watching. I was a just car waiting. Crash. I was gonna see what other people did, and then he's watching the car crash in slow motion, <laughs> and he didn't say anything. I could have understood him, but yeah, I know. I'm fluent in crap, by the way. 
Nobody asked. <laughs> <laughs> How do you want us to do this, CJ? Call it out or? Uh, yeah, let me see. I got these. Okay, so we got an 11, a 19, a 10. Okay. We got an 11, a 19, 21. Nineteen is Amada. And eleven was Morcliffe. Bruna is it fifteen? Yep. By the way, while we're going into uh, this combat here and CJ's getting prepped, I will. I want to show one thing on the screen. <laughs> so we have a very, uh, I think, f combat heavy uh, group. We have a, a paladin, a fighter, a barbarian, and a war mage, and then a little old rogue. Uh, I did a poll on my YouTube uh, community, yeah, YouTube community uh, page, and here you go. You can see the results of it. It was which party role most is most important to have in an adventuring party, and without a doubt, the healer was the yeah. the one winning with 50 uh, sorry 47 percent of vast majority over the rest of them uh so that's the one we really don't have heck is gonna be our our dedicated battle medic I think right but uh according to the poll here we are we are not ready so that should be fun <laughs> should be good ah. I can't wait to TPK well we have potions of healing I'm That's glad true. Amata started out with a strong nine <laughs> hit points. That's great. Uh, amazing. We're going to be fine. Okay. So It's just a crayfish. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah, just... Have a po boy. You know what? You know what? After this fight, we'll have plenty to eat. Okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, there's another creature. There's another creature's leg. So with slap that, the crayfish uh, with the other creature's leg. Yep. Sorry, CJ. Yeah. No, go ahead. You can you can, you can slap the you can you can slap the like it. button, the subscribe button, <laughs> the bell button. All that for all the updates. Uh, yeah. So Vogo, you were kind of eyeing the crayfish, making sure you knew where it was and what it was doing. So you get to go first as uh, initially combat starts. You, you notice that it's a, it's moving uh, into a more aggressive stance. It was it was just kind of attack like looking like it was trying to scare you away, but now it looks like it's it means business. It's going in. All right. Uh, I dig a few steps over and look this thing up and down raise my battle axe and swing down to attack it. Alright. Alright. That would be 14. Uh, that's going to miss. You're, yes. You bring it down, no, 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 but no, no, it's no. it's strong. Uh, Carapace is just too much for your 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 battle axe to get through at this point. You you went for the you didn't go for the weak point. You didn't find the joint. You actually went for like the actual plate of, uh, of uh, on the on the on the crayfish. Anything else? Bonus actions. Uh, I go uh oh tough beastie, and I go for a uh, second attack. I love being fifth level. <laughs> Doing what? Twenty one. <laughs> All right, that one. That this time you're like, oh, don't go for the the carapace. Go for the go for the weak spots. So yeah, go you hit head. It gets through. Yeah. It's all right. Damage is five. All right. Is there a reason I didn't it didn't come up on the mm -hmm. in the chat? Did anybody else notice that? It didn't that, come up in the chat. My, in the chat? There. Yeah, it didn't pop up. Oh, here it oh, is. There it is. Oh. Just came up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. slow roll twenty today. 
little delay. Little delay. <laughs> that is probably because I'm in. Oh, you're That's in the probably Indian just Beyond. a me thing. Yeah, yeah. That's probably a me thing, and then I just didn't open it up. Gotcha. I will try to open it up. Weird, oh yeah, yeah. You do have to do that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That okay. is a me thing. I will fix. It's weird. Your 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 second roll. It says rolling five. Five equals five equals five. I don't know if that rolled correctly, but I'll take the five damage. <laughs> it is D and D Beyond, so it's it's probably legit. You know, who yeah. knows? How hey, you know we're it, playing? It, it, fifth it rolled edition. the same damage for yeah. both. It rolled eight equals eight equals eight for the damage. But five damage. You're attacking with one hand uh, in the mm. axe. Okay. Uh, next is Amada. Oh boy. You you intimidated this thing into getting aggressive. <laughs> See, it knows I'm a worthy fighter. That's why we're doing this. And I'm going to go up to it and uh, I'm going to, you know, do what a fighter does and try to whack it with my warhammer. Does an 11 hit? Nope. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. you, get, you also are like, I'm going to attack the, the hard part of its shell. Watch this. Bunk. I'm not going to try to whack it again. Does it and then turn? you're like, you also realize, wait, <laughs> go for the joints. That's probably what I should do. And roll damage. Cool. Um, can I also use my, uh, with the feet crusher that I got, uh, I can also move it back five feet into an unoccupied space. Sure. I don't know what the thing is in the middle. It's a, there's stones. That's another five damage. Mm-hmm. All right, and you're gonna move it back five feet. Yeah. For, for uh, you, might, I don't know if you you can do that, but for me, my feet is makes it so if I'm next to them, I can attack them if they try to attack someone besides me. You can push it back <laughs> though. If you already did that, that's fine. Do you we'll we'll find this out in the middle. Of the we'll learn do our you, tactics. Do you want yeah. To? yeah, yeah. You, you, do you want to shout that? Thing. Like, wait, no, don't move him. <laughs> nah, nah, it's too late. It's fine. All right. All right back. The advance right here. Right, oh, so there we go. You push it back five feet, and then you move in with the, you, you stay close to it? Yeah. All right. Uh, so it is the crayfish's turn, and he is going to attack with its claws. Uh, it's going to attack each of you once. So the first one is on Vogo. And a 11 is going to miss. And then the next one is on Amada. But what does your ability do? I just moved it back five feet. I uh, know, uh, Vogos. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically when a creature uh, makes an attack against someone besides me, I can use my reaction to make a melee attack against them. OK, so it's going to, it is going to attack Amada, or um, you. Uh, no, Amada, yeah, sorry, with a 23. <laughs> No. <laughs> so it will hit you. I get attacked by rocks. I get attacked by crabs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and you are grappled also. So you're going to take seven bludgeoning damage and you are grappled by the crayfish in its claw. It is holding you. And if, Vogo, you want to make your attack against it. I'm so battering you. I would. All right, so I'm going to make my attack. And <laughs> I miss. <laughs> that one. Can't do anything about that. That one. Oof. All right. Uh, next up is Bruna. Bruna. Bruna is going to enter the room and... Let's see. The light source is coming from Mr. Morkliff. Mr. Morkliff. So I'm Mr. actually going to go... Yeah, I'm going to go along the wall here next to Morcliff. So 5, 10, 15, 20. I want to stay within the light so I could see what I'm doing. Uh, but I will go to the north a bit and stay within the 40 feet of you. I'm going to go right here to the wall. And then I'm going to ask uh, Torm 
to guide my thoughts, and I'm going to harness a psychic blade in my hand. It's a faint purplish glow looking like a dagger, and I'm going to use my mind to send it at the crayfish. All right. I got a total of 19. 19 hits. For a total of 10 psychic and 12 sneak attack. 22 damage. Wow. All right. Yeah, it takes a lot of damage. It the, the blade, because it's a psychic blade, you see it fly through the air and you hit the the the, the crayfish right in its in its shell, but it goes right through and and just hurts. Like it, it, it does all this crazy damage to it. In the mind. Um, and you can you can see you can see it like it's weird. It, it totally winces, but like it, you you can't really tell because it's a crayfish face. It doesn't have the <laughs> emotional capacity that a human face does. But you know what? It hurt. A uh, good, good. I, uh, I I also will apologize to it in my mind. I know it can't hear me, but I'm, I'm sorry. And then I will uh, use my bonus action to uh, dash as a cunning action, and I'll go to the other side of the room. Okay. Mr. Morcliff. Okay, I'm going to move over here. And let fire with a firebolt. Um, let me see if it hits. Oh, my roll 20 has gone very slow. It seems to be see. laggy tonight, huh? Yeah. It must be everybody that's tuning in to see it's slowing the internet down yeah this really big map i think is also not oh oh the map is huge yeah yeah the map is 11 huge. so 11 i miss misses okay your, your fire bolt swings wide uh next up is heck all right so i will bustle into the room how did you all get in here so quick and uh, I'll run up to the fish, and I'll turn to my left and nod at Amada, turn to my right and nod at... Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, what's your name again? Vogos. Vogos, right, yes. Nod at my comrades, and I'm just gonna lay into the crayfish with my long sword. Okay. My buddy will help me. <laughs> we... <laughs> Did you say my buddy will hit me? Because that's what I think Heck might have done. So since I was outside while you guys were whacking away at the crayfish, I didn't see the strategic spots. So I just, <laughs> thunk, like, it just hit it on the head. For team muscle, let's go. Uh-huh. I'm the brawn, not the brains, to be clear. We're all the brawn. Uh, I have an extra attack, CJ, so I'm just yeah, going to roll that. Go for it. All right. Attack. Second attack. Oh, you go and. for you go for the weak spot, but it just doesn't quite do the damage that you were hoping for, and it does zero damage. So we go back to the top of the order, and Vogo, it is your turn. Your turn. All right, I will uh, go for the attack again. That is a ooh. That is looking like a miss. That's going to be a miss, unfortunately. You swing wide. Oh, no. To... Come back for round two. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the axe comes down and bounces. You get, a, you get a bad angle on it, and it doesn't get in. It just kind of skips off like a, like a stone on a lake. Ah. The axe does no damage as you blasted hit. creature crayfish. Amada, show these guys how to do it. <laughs> how damaged does the crawfish look at this? Oh, it looks it, physically, it looks very undamaged. Mentally, it's like <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> but if, it's mostly because you guys keep hitting its shell. 
and the psychic <laughs> knife did a lot of damage. To it. It's concussed. It's yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit dazed. Um, I'm grappled right now. You are grappled. Uh, does that do anything to my attacks? Or? It does nothing to your attacks other than that you cannot move away from this thing. I got it right where I want it. <laughs> I'm gonna try to hit it with my warhammer again. Whack! That'll hit. Ah. Okay, so the trick yeah. is we gotta do sound effects, guys. That's the secret. <laughs> <That's a> secret. <laughs> All right. Okay. And I'll whack it again. Oh, unfortunately, this one does not make the contact you wanted. Buddy, okay. buddy, help, help. Uh, okay. It is the crayfish's turn, and it is going to attack with its claws two times. One on Amada, who oh, no. has grappled. Ooh, Ooh critical to, hit. Do my, that had to be the natural 20. Critical roll. Get a nat one against the rocks, and the crowd gets a nat 20 on me. Snip, snip. Oh, this isn't so bad. This is only eight damage. I'm going to... Oh. Did more damage with the... I, feel... I don't know. On that uh, attack, I'm going to use my uh, reaction again. Okay. Oops. That... That'll only hit. count the first one. Only count the wait, first one. Wait, wait. Is this a full round has gone by, or because your uh, reaction, you only get one? Uh, he got his reaction back when, yeah, at the beginning yeah. of. The, oh, thank God. He already won. So he got his reaction back. Only count the. Uh, it's the first one. So an 18? Yep. That'll hit. Sweet. Finally. And then that should be a four damage. All right. Slow and steady, slow and steady. Uh, well, it's going to swing back at you with its claw. For an 18, does that hit you? Uh, yes. That matches. That'll hit. So he's going to do Ooh. eight damage to you. Ooh. Can he and grapple? You are grappled, and you are grappled in its other claw now. He's holding uh. both you... <laughs> And Amada in its claws. Oh my gosh, we're twinsing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's the end of its turn. Bruna. Is anybody else worried that that thing in the center isn't moving? I'm worried. I'm worried um, too. That's why I'm staying away from it. Yeah, I'm going to... I feel like it might even be better to just keep going on the other side. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Oh, there's stairs. Five, six. I'm gonna go thirty feet to here. Actually, this seems too close. I'm actually gonna stay up here, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna use my psychic blade again. Uh, Ilmater, guide my hand so I may protect others. And I'm gonna strike him with the uh, the psychic blade for the first attack. Mm, okay, so that's not gonna hit an eleven. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna use my bonus action to harness another blade. And attack this time. It's only going to be a D4 damage, but I, hoping I sneak attack. And I don't hit either. Nine. Uh oh. Okay. Right. Um, uh, all right. That's my turn. All right. Let me just look up Oh, God. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll wake it up now. Uh, you, did, you did remind me that it's the, the, the thing in the middle of the room didn't do anything. Uh, so, <laughs> now the thing oh. Is oh, no. This is a DM pro tip here, CJ, I think. DM pro tip. When the players remind you of something, let's do it. <laughs> uh, pro tip. Pro tip. We'll put that there. Uh, yeah, the the stone in the center of the room begins to like shift and move as it kind of raises up, and it just turns out like more legs and claws and things start to kind of uh, appear out from under the rock as a 
very large hermit crab uh, grows out of the, the sand and silt underneath uh, in the middle of the room. So, yes, a, a large, a, a giant hermit crab is now kind of emerged. And it kind of, you hear from it kind of a yawn. It's like a... And then it kind of speaks in that same language that the crayfish was chatting, was was shouting at you. Oh, this, oh, 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 yeah, oh, Uki and Solo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you you kind of hear that come from it. Uh, oh, really? But it, it doesn't uh, do much else on its uh, as it uh, emerges. Listen, so, tell Jabba I've got the money. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Uki and Solo. Uh, more cliff. It is your turn. Oh dear. <laughs> what about that comprehend oh, languages. I'm I'm curious what they're saying. Is it is it actually speaking? It, yeah. Yeah. It is some. I can't I can't of... speak to them if I do comprehend languages. I don't believe. No, but you would. No. I mean, if they're you saying like, they're hey, saying. hey, 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 stop. <laughs> that would be okay <laughs> to know. The only one saying that is me. True. Okay, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow comprehend languages so I can hear what it's saying. It lasts an hour, so. Okay. Yeah, you can, uh, you can hear it. <laughs> they as it they stop of, talking. <laughs> uh, as you, you you cast comprehend languages, and you can still hear them kind of talking, and it uh, the large hermit crab seems to be saying. What's awakened me from my slumber? What is going on here? What is all of this racket? And the giant crayfish seems to be saying, these these creatures have attacked us. They're coming in. They're, I, I have to do my duty and I am attacking. I'm, I'm keeping them away. I have to keep them away. Get out. Uh, so that's kind of what you can hear. They're the the large hermit crab was disturbed by its uh but disturbed by your combat and fighting and the crayfish is just kind of uh telling it like i had to attack them the, these interlopers are here we, we must get them out of here they must die for uh for being here i'm gonna shout out everybody disengage these are defending their territory if we leave this area they will likely ignore us. Um, Down the stairs. Tell them to let go of our friends first. Yeah, constructive criticism. I'm being held by a claw. So I don't think that's going to really work out. Use your strength. You have strength. <laughs> Can I try to intimidate him? <laughs> You're a fighter, are you not? <laughs> Uh, Warcliffe doesn't care. <laughs> uh, and is there anything else you wanted to do on your turn? No. I want okay. to cower. <laughs> cower. <laughs> to cower. The cower right. corner is right here. All right. Heck, it is your turn. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> so I assume, Morcliffe, you didn't, like, let us know what they said. You just said disengage, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, then, <clears throat> I will say, why would I disengage when they are clearly attacking us? And I will take, once again, my long sword, and I'll, I'll try to hit this crayfish-looking fella. And once again, I smack him in the middle of a plate. Doing no damage. Gonna roll my second attack. Woo! Critical hit! Yeah! Not bad, had to... Woo! You have to do some damage! Praise Torm! <laughs> How do you want to kill this giant crayfish? Yes. Badness. Uh, I, I will say, release my friends! 
and I will d take one giant swipe at the claw that's holding Amada, and then another giant swipe at the claw that's holding Vogos. And then as it just, the innards just flow out through the holes that used to be its arms, and I say, you totally asked for that, you know. Had it coming. Yeah. Heck is ruthless. <laughs> is ruthless. Anything to protect right. my friends. Yeah, the, the claws fall to the ground. They, they release uh, Amada and, and Vogos, and you guys are freed. And the giant crayfish uh, just collapses the rest of the way to the ground as the rest of its innards fall out. And uh, the large uh, hermit crab can kind of be heard uh, saying something and uh, Morcliffe kind of understands this and it says, well, 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 you are quite the adversaries. There is no need for more combat. We do not need to continue this fight. Down the stairs, I shout. He will leave us alone. This one is friendly. And he kind of... Uh, <laughs> friendly. So yeah, if we if we we don't fight, he sta he gives us a... I guess we don't understand what he's saying, but do we understand that the creature doesn't want to fight? Like it has a body posture that doesn't yeah want i mean to it's, it's kind of still caution. standing it's it's a it's a hermit crab its body posture is still like it's it's up it's not aggressive no um but it is kind of yeah uh, it, it's watching you but not moving aggressively towards you or anything at this point okay who's um but who's up will uh we can we can end initiative if you guys aren't going to attack it then right Vogos? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I, I look at the uh, innards of the uh, freshly killed crab-looking thing, and I say, mm, fresh fish. And I pick up a bit of it and, like, smell it. <laughs> it's not even, like, the good part. What do you mean? Crab legs are the best part. Get the claw. Oh, like juicy. Do not taunt this animal, Borgos. It is intelligent. Come down the stairs with you. Can't be that. Smart. All right, all movie. right. I throw it back on the ground and I uh, hustle around to the stairs. CJ, are, do we see the other doors to the north and the south? Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a door. Yeah, you can see the doors. There's a door to the north. Well, not to the north, to the east and west. Oh, to the east and west, yes, there's yes, yes. An north and is left, door, yeah. And the northern door, or there's a northern, there's a staircase to the north that leads down. Gotcha. Uh, but there are, yes, there are two doors to the north and uh, to the east and west. This map is so confusing; they could have just turned it yeah. 90 degrees. And it totally fine. Yeah. But I am. Um, that's not how it's written. In the right, rules. of course. I'd it's like to ask uh, the group uh, psychically, so not Vogos. Uh, perhaps we should ask the crab which way we should go? Like, exit? Wise? I, uh, yes. Perhaps we could find an exit. It must know what's down here better than us. Good idea. Crab? I will go I will walk to here and I will gesture to the crab each door in turn. <laughs> mm. 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 <laughs> do you make the hmm sounds? I do, yes. Um, okay. I I just have to say before this, you know, this thing answers you. Uh, we just killed its friend. Uh, he says uh, the the crab kind of looks at you and is like like again, it's it's not aggressive. It's it, it, you just killed its friend, so it kind of also has some self preservation. So, while you did kill its friend, and you might think that that would be a reason for it to attack you, it kind of, uh, when you point towards the eastern wall, this one, this door, he kind of like gestures at like a, and, and says, uh, you can hear him say, yes, yes, that's the way. You want to go that way. Which door? 
To the east. The eastern door. The one to, to the, the east. To the top. The nor the what would be the northern door, but is really the eastern door. Gotcha. What's burned to Morcliffe's ear? Do we trust the crab? <laughs> I trust the crab. I opened the eastern door. You are looking for an exit. That is the way. I thought we were taking the stairs. Oh, I mean, it is better cardio. It appears the crab is set to go north or to this, go east. This fine crab. Why doubt the crab? Um, because it might be a trapped room or something. Nah, nonsense. And I open the door. A trap. Check. 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 Fortunately, it was not. <laughs> uh, telepathically, I'll say to Morcliffe. Remember, it might be best that you stay a few paces behind. Telepathic, I say. I apologize, sir. I would. Why uh, don't you take the lead? I, I would graciously, and I'll say to everybody, that was very brave of Mr. Morcliffe. Uh, I will be the lookout, yes? And I step ahead. Again, I'm going to go slow down the hallway. Um, I, I could use my pass if you'd like, or roll if there's if you feel the purpose to roll. But I'm gonna be looking to the ground and the walls again as we as we go, and I try to monitor. All right. So as you enter this uh, hallway, the walls of this corridor are wet and slimy. The stucco covering has become saturated with water and is decomposing and sloughing, sl slowing, sloughing. Sloughing? Sloughing. I don't know. Sloughing off in spots on the southern wall, exposing the seams to one of the large stone blocks from which the structure was built. Oh, yeah. So as you kind of go down right along the wall here, you can see that there's uh, this stone has kind of been exposed. Slough. 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 Sloughing off in spots, the stucco has been. Gross. Yeah. That's kind of what you see. All right, so it's a sticky, gross hallway. Yep. And as we go through, I'll, I'll monitor my steps. I do suggest people stay like 10 feet at least behind me. Um, my passive perception, if you want me to use that, is actually 19. Sorry, 18. 18. And I'll move down the hallway slowly, half my speed to about here. Yeah, this is where, right about there, that's where you can see this kind of sloughed stone that seems, you can kind of peek through and see a little bit of uh, something on the other side. Perhaps another room. Ooh. I want to go to that little opening and peek through it. Uh... I know it's a tiny little like slit. Yeah, it's a very small sliver <laughs> okay. of uh, room. You can't see much beyond it, um, but there does seem to be some some kind of chamber through there. Telepathically, I tell the three in communion with me that there's another room here, clearly. These may be arrow slits or something. Are they smaller than arrow slits? They might be even smaller. Uh, they might be a little bit smaller. It, it, it's a, it's a long, uh, like a long narrow slit. Yeah, a long slit. narrow slit that runs along like the whole block, uh, like the whole wall, almost. Okay. Perhaps it um, is best that we, uh, we lay low here. We duck your heads. And I'll, uh, I'll kind of crouch down and, and go to the corner here. I'll go to the corner and kind of carefully peer around it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can... It's dark there, though, right? It's dark there, but uh, if you just kind of look ahead, you can see uh, there appears to be a staircase. Oh. You can kind of just see some stairs. I duck my head and move forward. Mr. Morcliffe, can I have your torch, please? Uh, you may not have my 
ebony staff. It is ancient and the source of my magic, but here, and I give him a lit torch. I have physical torches. Ah, I will uh, light the torch and, and take it from Mr. Morcliffe. Thank you, Mr. Morcliffe. I will, uh, Bruna's going to move down with the torch. I will go ahead and see the stairs. Oh, yeah, there they are. Oh, darn. It would appear that this passageway has been blocked off as well. We may have to uh, double back. The crab may not have known this. Uh, the stairs are blocked off, everybody. I come back. I am not digging through that again. The staircase goes up for only a few steps, up. and then it, it seems that the rest is filled in with clay and stone rubble. You can, all you can always time. try and dig your way out, though. Mm. Always try and dig your way out. Mm. I have a pickaxe. I could try laughs, again. <laughs>, laughs the DM maniacally. <laughs> I want to look at this slit here. Is there any way of enlarging it? I have a pickaxe. There's. You, you can way. certainly try. I just want to look at it. Is there yeah. a mechanism or some such thing? It's just a large stone in the way. There's a a large block, stone a stone block that's. Seemingly in front of a passageway. But try and push the stone. I help him push the stone. Yeah, we, we see we see like the puny person, and we're just gonna like the muscle is gonna turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, Does it have a hmm? like pushing the wall, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, you're you're pushing on the stone. Uh, yeah, you guys all, uh, how many of you are going to try and push on this stone? I want to try. Bruno's going to go down here while they do that. <laughs> Alright, so... I will, I got... will direct the push-in, and I think that my stronger fellow would be more... So, a mod hey, of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. A mod oh. of Ogos and, uh... I'll get in on the action. Hex will and join. Hex going to join also? Why not? All right. Let's go. Oh, what? yes. Buddies, let's go. What? I got you, buddy. I'm like. What are what are all of your strengths? Uh, sixteen. Okay. Yeah. My strength is not strength. I'm gonna stay down here. Uh, oh, uh, your strength? Mine is uh sixteen. Sixteen, 16 as awesome. well. Sixteen, 16 as well. also. Uh. And 16 is 30. Uh oh, we lost somebody. Oh. Uh oh. We'll get uh, Andrew back in a sec. We're going to go to the wait screen. We're back. Okay, we're back. Great. 
Uh, so sorry for the technical difficulties, but uh, in while we were away, Amada, Vogos, and Heck all started pushing at this large stone, and with their combined strength of 48 exactly, they were able to move it. Back. Eve, ho! Eve, ho! And they move the stone 10 <laughs> feet back into the room. Wow, okay. You can now be by, you can now get past it. Hey, Brune, I want to check out this room so your anxiety doesn't get bad. I'm yeah, moving I, to I, the room. <laughs> I would. Yes, I would. Uh, step oh, aside. Oh, someone step seems aside. to beat you to it. He's quite oh. rambunctious. Who went in? Oh, no, Vogos wants uh, to go. Uh -huh. I uh, am in the process of moving in if my Wi-Fi would uh, allow. I can move you in. The Wi-Fi gods. The Wi-Fi gods? Yeah. Uh, Vogos goes in first. That's fine. Yeah, so uh, beyond the plug is a small foyer holding three sealed urns on the east and west sides. To the south are double doors of bronze with glyphs worked into their faces. Mm. Um, I, look, I look at the urns. I look at the door. And I'm like, this has got to be some kind of puzzle. And then I just go to the door and try and open it. <laughs> um, can I look at the urns and like the glyphs on them? Uh, yes. Uh, the ancient glyphs are scribed in Ullman. You, uh, we discussed this. This is the language that you can read but not speak. That's uh, because of your uh, arch oh, your... archaeologists. Yeah, background. your background. Nice. I, I gave you this as a. A, a bonus. Um, the ancient, uh, yeah, I said there is glyphs are worked on the faces of the double doors. The urns do not, but the glyphs on the uh, door, if that's what you're reading, uh, in ancient Almond says, Here lies Tolokis Popolokis, master of the others, who is like the wind and the night. I, I say that out loud, but completely butcher the name. Here is Tamagotchi, um, master of all that stuff. Inside the urn? No, no. No, that was the it's door. Like, the door. Oh. So, like, I, I'm. this is just my educated guess. This might be, like, you know, a tomb, and, you know, in tombs with these types of places, typically, like, you know, like, a lot of treasure. Good stuff to sell. Treasure? Treasure. Um, I am opening the door. <laughs> I'll also tends to be trapped, but you know, that's on you if you want to try that out. <laughs> I I, okay. I would like to inspect it if you are worried. I'm bah. not worried. I'm just getting good results. I would like to step out um, of the room, perhaps. So, Vogos... Uh, you uh, you go up to the door and you try and open it, oh, uh, but it appears to be locked. Do you want to try and force it? I uh, struggle with the door for a bit. I bang on it. Nothing. It doesn't open <laughs> when you knock. Like when you say you want to bang on it. No, I'm just knocking. Anybody help? Yeah, no answer. <laughs> mm. Did somebody I... check the urns? Sorry, Michelle, did you check the urns? I wish I... to examine the urns. Oh, gotcha. All right. Find Go ahead, Michelle. Urn. Is there anything written in those urns, guys? Are they Let me canoptic... know. I can try to read them. They are, they are I can sealed. read the, them also. Are they canoptic jars? They are not canoptic jars. They have, they are they're not the urns. mummified parts. Uh, they're, they're urns sealed with beeswax. Uh, None of my... ours. With my whole background as with a historical knowledge, would I have any idea what these are? Uh, they seem to be some sort of um, probably like ritual burial urns, uh, things that perhaps uh, offerings to the dead uh, before as they were moving on to the afterlife. Like shiny offerings to the dead? Uh, it's 
possible that there were shiny offerings to the dead. That this is something that cultures like this might have done. And I cast Detect Magic as a ritual on the door. You can. It's going to take you 10 minutes, right? Oh, yeah. Do we have 10 minutes to just hang out in the small minutes. room, guys? You know what? I step back and try and slam ice down ice. the door. All right. Give me a strength <laughs> check. All right. Trying to do us icebreakers like, no, no. <laughs> right. While Bogos does this, I'm going to start just the ritual in the background. Just gonna start sure little strength oh i got a 12. solid <laughs> i'm not feeling very dwarven <laughs> strong today uh, so like Bruno, yeah, you, like you, you, what you brings you down kind of rear back do you want to are you proficient in athletics uh i am yeah okay so do you want to add your proficiency what's your proficiency oh you wanted athletics it's strength or it's like a strength athletics check. If yeah, you if you have to, athletics, you can. If you have it, athletics, yeah. you can add your proficiency. Whatever your proficiency is, we'll add. Oh, it okay, to so that would be. Um, so I got a tw- three? So I got a nine plus six is so fifteen. So it'd be fifteen. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, you rear back and you try and slam into the door. Uh, it does not uh, seem to budge. Uh, let me just check one thing. I, I agree with Heck. I believe that it might be good that we take our time and I can inspect the door and really, really understand it. If it is locked, I may be able to open it. And I take out my thieves' tools. Still working on my ritual in the background. <laughs> yeah, take uh, your time. Let me know when it's been 10 minutes. Take uh, your time. I'm going to uh, investigate the door if that's you're possible. Investigate the door. Okay, yeah, yeah you can certainly investigate the door. Uh, you have a light, you have a a light source, right? Yeah, yeah. the Vogos. Uh, so uh, give me a perception check. Okay, I'm probably going to be looking for any sort of uh, mechanism on it. Uh, there's no. Was there a, a lock or a, a discernible door it's, handle? It's it's a discernible lock on it. Yes. It, so it, I guess I'll locked. inspect the lock first, but then uh, it, in the periphery, yeah, I want to. Just give me a perception check, and I'll, I'll let you know some of the stuff that you, you, you notice on the door. So I got a 14. I am going to use one of my psychic dice, my okay. side bolstered knack, to add to this. Because I feel like I might succeed with a 14, but not not oh, everything. So I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'll add it to it. Here's a D8. So add five to that, so that'll be 19. That'll be 19. Uh, yeah, you inspect the door. It's it's definitely locked. Um, you don't uh, really notice anything much about it, but you definitely know that you could probably pick the lock uh, if you spend a good uh, a, an amount of time on it. It's not a super difficult lock. Uh, for you to try and get through your thieves' tools and your skills, you probably have a good chance of getting through it. Uh, you don't see uh, any trap uh, from your investigation, um, but again, you are uh, you're just giving it kind of a, a quick, a, a good glance. Um, and would I waste that dice? Or does that? Do uh, I, did oh, I succeed? Uh, no, that wouldn't be a waste of die. You uh, you keep did not the dice. Succeed. Okay. You keep the die. Okay, I'm so. going to then telepathically tell the group uh, that I am fairly certain this would be safe, but just for your own safety, pass uh, pass through the doorway again. Vogos, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, it would might be good to have someone by my side, but just take a step back by the urn. Ah, fine. I'm gonna use uh, thieves' tools to pick the lock, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm not gonna open the door. I'm gonna wait for Michelle to finish casting. <laughs> Here's my. I don't uh, know. Dexter. I don't know what the tech magic ritual looks like. This is interpretive dance. <laughs> 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 
Wow, magic is so strange and mysterious. While you're picking that lock thing, I'm a, a little bored, so I'm going to go and pick up an urn. Yeah, I'm going to pick up an urn and smash the top of it. Oh my god. <laughs> right. Oh, well, that's not so, what I was going <laughs> to... Okay. So, so here's Ooh. my total, CJ. I got a <laughs> dexterity of seven, but then mm-hmm. I have expertise in it, so it's going to be plus six to that, so 13. 13. And I'm not happy about that, so I'm going to roll... Mm, no, I'm going to I'm gonna keep it. Uh, unfortunately, you, you sit there for a good couple minutes trying to, to pick the lock. It just doesn't seem like you, you got it uh, unlocked uh, okay. with what you were doing. So, Andrew, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Morcliffe and Vogos, you start checking out the, uh, the urns. Uh, you're going to break the, the wax seal on them? Not, and, and open not them? me. Not me. I didn't do that yet. Oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get there yet. I was getting there, but uh, <laughs> Morecliffe beat me to it. Morecliffe, you're going to break the seal on one of these urns and, and see what's inside? Yeah, I just, just, like I say, break it off with my dagger. Okay. okay. Yeah, you break I'm the seal. curious. There may be magical spells or It's made of beeswax. Artifacts. It's just, a, it's just a, bee wa- a beeswax seal, so you just kind of scrape it away with mm-hmm. your uh, with your with the, the side of your dagger and you you lift up the uh the the top and it's filled with oil like oil for a lantern like lantern oil this these urns contain about 20 pounds of flask oil 20 20 flasks worth of oil and they weigh about 25 pounds hmm oh. awesome. oh, CJ can Ritual, burning oil, well, kind of thing. Let's each take some oil. It may be useful. Yeah. Um, is it really a good idea to have 20 pounds worth of something extremely flammable on your person? Well, it was only 5 pounds each. No, each one weighs 25 pounds. The urn. Mm. The oh. urn weighs 25 pounds. And contains 20 flasks worth of oil. How about this? I'll fill up my lantern here with one of these oil things. Um, I don't... I mean, we could. I guess we could bring it. I have a sack I guess we could use, but you know, these things are so heavy. Yeah. Uh, I'm not that interested in oil. I have my own thieves tools, Bruna. Let me, let me try it. Well, I was going to say, I my once talent. I know I fail, I can use one of my side bolstered Dice. Can I do that, CJ? Dice? Yeah. Yeah. You can, since you know you failed, you can. You can yeah. All right. So it's only adding one. So it's probably going to be fourteen. It's not enough. Okay. I'll step aside for more cliff. Okay, might... And I'm going to move out of the room while he does it. Her okay. dance is cool. Uh, 13. Unfortunately, that's less than uh, Verna's 14. Oh, damn it. We ain't getting through this door. <laughs> it's been 10 I, minutes since I've started Vogus my ritual. And, you can, yeah, you can, your, your ritual has gone off. Uh, there is nothing magical uh, in this room. Has, uh, Dang. Yeah, nothing has... Yeah, nothing. Nothing magical uh, is detected in the in the room from your detect magic. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, the the lock has has seemed to have best you guys. Uh, <laughs> but the, I mean, uh, may, may I, I, I can, I can uh, if you want to spend another. Uh, uh, oh wait. Huh? May I suggest something to the group? I say this aloud so everybody, including Vogos, can be. It would appear that the the crab believe that we could go north or east but I do not know if the crab has ever ventured down here this door may not lead to an exit perhaps it's best that we head back to that chamber and go down the stairs or go oh, west I, I'm super convinced the door is just like a tomb or something uh, let me I'm 
I don't really like to go into this tomb. Let me, let me try one more thing. I'm going to take out a flask, a little bit of water. I'm going to cast the cantrip Shape Water to move it into the lock. Then I'm going to cast it again as another action to make it take the shape of the lock exactly. Then I'm going to cast it again to freeze the water and cause expansion. And see if this can somehow break the lock and force open the door. Oh. Science experiment over here. That is... The power of magic. An interesting way of solving this problem. Um, yeah, give me a... Uh, I need to check for that. Um, is this a cantrip? Yeah. Shape water. Hmm. hmm. Not sure that shape water can be used to lock pick. Let me just see what shape water can do. You can either shape water, change its flow, or freeze it. And you can do subsequent I actions. Have something I want to do too. What would you like to do, Gorgos? I look at the uh, urn or what I'm holding, and I chuck it against the other wall and then I move over to the other ends and smash them. And then I look at them and see if there's anything. It's like Legend of Zelda. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You've covered the floor of this chamber in oil. Oh, God. Bruna's going to go south. While (laughs) Bruna, Bruna holds the torch above her head and little flecks of of ash no, no. <laughs> fall <laughs> to the ground. But they go out just they aren't enough to ignite the oil. Um, oh, unlucky. Oil like a drip, 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 drip that'll never stop. <laughs> oh. Um, Are you guys good in there? Can we try Thieves uh, Tools again? Yeah, you can try Thieves Tools again if you'd like. Uh, you know, one of those rooms. Uh, you can try these tools again if you if you really want to. I mean, you're spending a good amount of time on this, so yeah. It's up to you guys. <laughs> I believe we should head back. I I feel like it would, the gods did not want us it, to go this way. Give it one more try. You can always try and bust down the door again. I know. I was, I was gonna, gonna say. Uh, I give up. I get a ten. I'm I'm getting annoyed. This this door is not gonna get <laughs> come uh, more cliff. So I I wonder, Amada and Vogos, shall we uh give this door the old heave ho as well and see if it'll budge? I would agree with you, but the floor is covered in oil, so I don't think we'll be able to push it very well. <laughs> I'm just it's gonna be saying. a little bit more difficult now that uh Vogos is just <laughs> it's not, there's not a lot of traction going on. Thanks, Bogos. Yeah. I mean, we could fix this really fast if we just light the oil and see if we could get it to burn away. I oh mean, my. we could all die from smoke inhalation. Well, you guys could all die from smoke in- inhalation, but, I would- but like, we could try that. <laughs> I'm horrified, and I slip and slide my way out of the room <laughs> as fast as I can. <laughs> what if I try the key from the front door? You know, that it shepherd's hook key. It appears to be a different lock. Yeah. It's not the master key yeah. to it's not the lock, It's not the master key. It's a different. It Look, appears to be guys, a different locking mechanism. This no, this tomb thing is like. I don't think we're going to be able to open this, but it's not like it's going to go anywhere. So like, let's check out the other areas now. Okay, like let's go. Let's go down some stairs or something. Let's get that workout and get the blood flowing. You know. A valid point. I uh, kind of a. Uh enter that room and I stake towards the edge and I hold my hands up showing that I have no weapons and I'm going to head around the crab. Uh, how long does um, Comprehend Languages last? One hour. One hour? Uh, yeah, you probably haven't spent the whole hour. So yeah, you can you can hear the, uh, uh, the, the hermit crab uh, look as you come back from the... Uh, uh, the hallway he sent you down, and he says, uh, so that is not a way that you could make your way out, or you have come back. 
either way. You may you may pass if you'd like. I mean you no harm. I gesture to the stairs. That is a way. You stairs. may go. I think south might be... I think uh, west might be a better choice, but... No, we're, <laughs> we're not listening to the crab anymore. Yeah. I don't it's passive-aggressive crab. Passive-aggressive <laughs> crab. He's like, I wouldn't have done that, but I, you you can go. Go ahead, oh, take, the yeah, yeah. take the stairs. Take the stairs. Yeah, so... Uh, the land, you, you head down the stairs. The landing at the foot of the short flight of steps is filled with mud and silt that partially blocks the door leading north. The door is meant to open inward, for there are hinges on this side and large grip to pull on. Oh, great. So... It's going to be hard to open. Yes. Bogos, Amada, heck, I'll let you go there. All right, let's go, everyone. Heave ho yet again. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, as you kind of go and you check where you are and how much of this door is covered and there's, like, silt and, and mud piled up against the door, it's about 18 to 24 inches of silt piled up against this door. It's just not really going to budge on a, on a pure strength maneuver. Oh, we got to dig it out. Uh, Does anyone have, have shovels? Shovel. Oh, I have a shovel. Yeah, digging. I don't know. <laughs> I, I already got like a lot of blood on my armor. I don't know if I want to get a lot of dirt on it too right now. I mean, it's still kind of dusty from the other room. Does someone else want the shovel? I've given up on manual labor. <laughs> just that? Uh, I, I'm just going to sigh and grab my shield off my back and just kind of start you, scraping you, away. You could take my shield. Okay. You know, you know what? I like the gum shield. Come yeah. join me, buddy. Come on. Uh, I'm a little sore. <laughs> just, uh, okay. See, as you uh, as you guys get your shovels and your your implements of, of destruction ready to start moving the silt, you start kind of shoveling it, and you you shovel it up the stairs, and it just because it's it's liquid and kind of quick sandy, and it just kind of flows back down the stairs into the room. It seems to like that. It seems like shoveling it is not going to be a way to solve this uh, issue that you're having. You know, Mr. Wizard Guy, do you think you could like use your like water magic to like mop this up and get it out of here or something? I'll try and shape water to direct the flow of it up the uh, stairs as they shovel. Amazing. I don't know if it counts as water as it's kind of silty mud, but there's it does have a water component. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, do you wanna you wanna use your you want to do kind of trip, the yeah. same thing and, and kind of force the water. Yeah, just direct the flow of the water out All of right, the way. Yeah. Uh, you can. Uh, how much water can you move with shape? It's like a five foot square. Oh, wow. Five foot cube. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can kind of force, you kind of take the shape water spell and you force the water like forward and start pushing at the at the silt and you're actually able to uh, wash away all of the silt in front of the door it kind of just pushes it under the door jam goodness that was so cool that was oh, so thank cool. you Bruno do you wish to uh, endeavor to open the door now uh yes I would I would like to uh, perhaps do that. I'm going to search the door, though, real quick, just to make sure there's nothing that I feel like will attack me if this door opens. A total of 14. Okay. So nothing seems out of, uh, out of the ordinary on the door. Um, it seems perfectly... Uh, normal door, not you don't notice any traps, nothing's uh, uh, 
uh, off about the door. Um, but as you kind of approach, you can kind of hear a, 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 a melody, like a song coming from beyond the door. Mm. Like there's, there's some sort of music emanating from the room beyond, perhaps. There is some sort of melody, a, 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 perhaps a song being played. Vogos, open the door. A party? I love parties. <laughs> then I will, please uh, open the door. I will go to open the door. Uh, what is your door opening approach like? Door opening approach is... I guess I would have to like... <laughs> does it have a handle? Yeah, it's going to pull open. Okay. You. Are you... The question is, how are you, are you doing it gently? Are you pulling the door open with all of your might? Oh, are you... Brashly, does, of course. How does Vogos open doors? Vogos is a brash opener of doors who pulls the door open is off its hinges practically. And when when he walks into the tavern, he pushes entrance. the doors as hard as possible. That is how he opens doors. Grand entrance. He's had to pay for many doors in his in his time. <laughs> They've uh, broken off hinges before. Only on the old terrible taverns, though. So, <laughs> as you uh, you burst into the room, you uh, hear a, a, a bit of a, a ah! and then a splash uh, from beyond, from from deeper into the room. And then you can see uh, there's kind of a, a flow of water uh, from where you are, further flowing further into the from this door. I I call back and say, I think something just went into the water. Like a dolphin. Like a a thing with language and can speak. Be very careful. Be Does very careful. Look like a giant lobster? Oh, they can they can talk. <laughs> I don't know. It was a something. Something's over there. Approach with caution. You said it was a party in there, right? Can you move your token, Dexter, or no? I was... Uh, you, you yes, can? yes. It, it was okay. just not working before. Gotcha. I meander in a little bit farther. We know when you guys get to, like, you guys are going to move to about here. Nobody saunter. Andrew, don't saunter. To saunter. <laughs> Must saunter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amada, you're taking the lead here? Or uh, Bogos? I, I think somebody's having bad connection moving forward. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I can move some I'm tokens. I'm half health. I'm not leading anything. Uh. Oh, God. Big pool. Yeah, it looks to be a giant pool of water. All right, so the room is lit by a soft light that reveals a section of rocky beach. Beyond the beach is a pool of glowing water filling half the room and framed by a crystal cavern. Green fronds can be seen in the pool. Light seems to flow from everywhere. The pool and the walls glisten like soft moonlight. On the far side of the pool is a set of doors carved with a sun symbol. Which doors? The north, uh, the, the west? Eastern East? doors. Gotcha. There's doors on both sides of the room. There's doors here and there's doors here. On the east and western sides of the room, there are doors. Uh, I will call out to the thing I heard and be like, We mean you no harm. I liked your music. Come back. I'm a big music guy. Um, you can kind of uh, see in the water something moving uh, as you kind of approached, or as you uh, look out amongst mm -hmm. the, the lake. 
I will. And uh, yeah, up from the water, kind of a, a female figure, kind of like just kind of comes up above the top of the the water. Kind of, you see her eyes. Does she say anything? Uh, no. She doesn't really uh, say anything to you. Are you back there, Mr. Morkliff? I'm still back there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I can hear. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very loud. He can still hear me. The, did you say the woman's in the water? Yes. She's in the water. And she's just kind of like got like uh, her eyes above the water, maybe maybe her nose. I don't like this. wave at her. I I uh I move in and I see her. <laughs> and I shout Hello <laughs> My uncharismatic way. Hello <laughs> uh, Do you know where I, the exit is? She kind of uh comes the rest of like more up her head now above the water and Andrew you can uh, understand her now as she speaks in that ancient language that uh, similar to what the uh, the, mm-hmm. cr- the crayfish and the, and the hermit crab spoke and she says who are you? What are you doing here? Mr. Morkler um, and I gesture, like make gestures for lost. Like, I don't know. He's doing interpretive dance too. Right. An exit? Are you? Are you lost? I I nod. Well, then you should find your way out of here. Perhaps go back the way you came. I'll mimic like rocks falling on my head. Mm. I'll point to the door. <laughs> this, Wait, what, is, this... what does that look like? What is rocks? <laughs> <laughs> that makes you understand. I'll point to this door here, this dry door. Yep. He says, yes, perhaps there's a way out that way. And I'll point to the door behind her. She kind of says, uh... Just like, if if you think that's the way as as well, just you may you may leave. Uh, telepathically, I want to say to Morcliffe, what is she saying? Can we trust her? She doesn't see. I I say out loud, she doesn't seem to know much. I say we just decide on a door. Perhaps the westerly door. Bruna. Uh, yes, Mr. Morcliffe. And I'll head over to the door. Give it a quick look over. Nothing more general looking at it than anything. And, uh, if I feel confident, I'll open the door. 22? Uh, yeah, you're pretty here. Uh, let me just... I'm a little concerned about this woman, though. I don't I don't like women who only reveal the top part of their face from water. <laughs> it's a pet uh, peeve of you're mine. You're kind of demanding. It's a pet peeve of mine. Uh, there is an illustration that goes along with this room. Oh. From the, yeah. From from the original TSR. Oh. Uh, she. Uh, this is. Uh, I'll allow you guys to see this one. Uh, there you go. Nice. Nice. <laughs> this is Eddie. the woman in the... Uh, Close your eyes if you're, uh, if you're not an adult. Eighth grader. If you're one of my Oh, my students. fair lady. Such an awkward position. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vogos. Vogos has totally changed his mind about this scenario here. I, uh... <laughs> only having seen her from the head above, I can already tell... What a beauty this woman might be. Is this something <laughs> odd about the reflection? 
just the way the artist did it. <laughs> I think that's the, the so. oddness is is the artistic interpretation. <laughs> hmm. Mm-mm. Artistic, yes. Mm-mm. Well, onto that door, Bruna. I'll open the door, CJ. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's a uh, hallway. Um, you're traversing east to west. Okay. Just a little bit slow. Sorry. Don't forget to like and subscribe while I figure. While out CJ's all of... looking for the door. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. You can watch Supernatural 20, Season 2, Episode 1. That's already up. The Camp Clearwater Massacre. Boy, it was it a massacre, to... all right. Yeah, boy. Was it a massacre? Should I just talk like this in, like, every video? ASMR, d and ASMR, trying to help people go, go to sleep? Yeah, I think that'd be good. There we go. At the door. The door opens. The hall is strewn with mud and flotsam. Water accumulates in the center of the corridor and flows westward to where a stone block in the southern wall has shifted out of place. Where's that? The corridor turns north and the flow of water follows it, then goes under a door made of bronze bound wood. The door has a handle and a keyhole. That's a little bit further down, but you'll eventually get there. Gotcha. I got gotcha. you. Continue walking. Yeah, I'll head again half speed, just kind of generally keeping my my uh, my head on a swivel. And uh, I get to the water here. I'm gonna just before I go into the water, tell everybody to be cautious and take my ten foot pole out and stick it in the water. It's just a shallow pool of water. Okay, then I'll move ahead to the door. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I'll stay about right here, about 15 feet away from the door. What do I see to the southern side here? Okay, so the, to the south, there is a uh, stone block in the southern wall it has shifted out of place. It's just uh, a broken wall section. I tell everybody telepathically that it looks like a door, or excuse me, a wall has been broken down. And Bruna will head down to the door that she saw and probably take a peek in that corridor. I take a look at where this water is coming from on the north side. Can I examine the source of the water? Uh... Yeah. Um, you can just kind of see... Let me see here. I believe the water is flowing kind of from this pool up here uh, down towards these stairs. So it looks like the water is kind of flowing uh, west to east... No, east to west and then towards that room. Oh, so what's, what's supplying the pool here with water? Was there a uh, drip above? Yeah, I guess there's some drip above. Or, okay. Yeah. The uh, water accumulates in the center of the corridor and flows westward. It doesn't really oh. say how it's accumulating, but Well, is, we'll find maybe. out. Want to open this door? Or do you want to go through the wall? I don't want to go through the wall, guys. What about you? I'm always up for going through the wall. I will confidently take a step through the wall <laughs> without even waiting for Bruna to give the go-ahead. No, ahead. please, go ahead. Walk through walls. Huh. Oh, this is so cool, guys. I love it when things get like this. Come on, Walk. it'll be fun. You they go can... ahead and tell us what you see. Report back. Okay. You can You can do it telepathically. Okay. I keep saying out loud. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna take out my, uh, Bull's head lantern. Oh, that nice. I filled with that oil earlier. Nice. Because uh, I'm, I'm going to assume nobody's giving me a light to go down here. With. No, no. All right. I'm gonna keep going down. Wow, this is quite the hall, guys. Is there anything like, on the walls or anything? 
no. Uh, water beads collect upon the walls of this narrow passage, and the floor is is cold and damp. A low ceiling, only five feet tall, further cramps this dank place. So it's a little bit tight. It's a little bit of a Oof. cramped space, but you're, uh, you're just kind of moving down this hallway. It's a little tight here, guys, but you know, everything's good. Rune, I don't think your fire, your ten foot pole would really fit down here. Or That's okay. Around this lovely corner. More hallway. Hey guys, it's more hallway. You want to come down here? Yes. So as Amada is disappearing from my view, I get very uncomfortable, and I I feel this overwhelming urge to protect her. So I'm gonna chase chase her down the hall. Buddy. <laughs> so, so you come down the hall. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> briskly, briskly. <laughs> oh my goodness! Thanks for coming down here with me. Should we let them go, Mr. Morcliff? I believe so. Should we follow? Yes. Is this a dead end? Do I see anything ahead of us? uh, It appears that you have found a dead end of some kind, but uh, yeah, it doesn't it looks just like a uh, a blank wall is ahead of you. May I mm. look and search for a a hidden door? Yeah, can you do that? I'll search the dead end for a hidden a secret right, give door. Give me a perception check. Total of seventeen, and right, if yeah. I fail, okay. Yeah, you, uh, you kind of inspect the whole wall and you check and you look and uh, right above the, uh, the door or the wall on the, on the top, there's a, a latch that oh. you, can fi- you find, a, ca- a catch that gotcha. will, uh, will open a, uh, seems, to, seems to open this door or the, or the wall. Let's do it. All right. So we op- so we found this through a wall, right? Mm-hmm. So something probably broke the wall. This has to be like a known way to go. This woman told us that it's safe down here, right? She said no, it was she, a way to go. Oh, she it's didn't a way really to go. tell us anything useful. Maybe she goes this way from time to time then. She was very beautiful. She, she was, was all right. She was all right. <laughs> I wonder what her skin. She had some fantastic is. eyebrows. Yes. And eyes, under those eyebrows. Eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Estelle. I think I, I think I cut you off. Were you saying something? I was just saying something stupid. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, buddy. I don't trust that woman, I say to everybody out loud. Why? I don't know. She was intimidated by beauty. (laughs) (laughs) Am I not beautiful, Mr. Morcliffe? Is that what you're suggesting? You're very beautiful. (laughs) What about me? (laughs) You are beautiful, too. Oh, it's... (laughs) You're as beautiful as my aunt Pamma. <laughs> Wait, what's her name? Pamma. Pam. Pamma. Yeah, Pam Ma. Is that a dwarven I'm gonna, name? I'm gonna assume that. Absolutely. One. That right. woman had, a, had uh, an air of mystery, which was very beguiling. Is is. Uh, so I will read the description. So in front of you, like you open the doorway here. And there is a statue, kind of the the, the back of a statue here, uh, facing uh, you're, you're facing. Uh, you can probably squeeze past be- by it uh, from this secret uh, passageway if you'd like. I would do that, and I would like to see what the statue's of. All right, so I can tell you about the stone statue as you guys move through. 
Uh, the walls and ceilings of this hallway are coated with slime, and the floor of the passage is covered with a layer of mud. Though this, uh, through this thick, through, oh man, yeah. through this muck, a steady stream of water trickles northward. The stucco on the walls is flaking off, and there are glowing silver tracks in the slime, crisscrossing the walls and ceilings. Along the east wall of the passage stands a 12-foot-tall stone statue of a man outfitted in fine clothing and holding a stone tray in his raised arms. Its eyes appear to be black gemstones. The right one droops out of its socket, balancing on the statue's cheek. From behind, the left shoulder protrudes the hilt of a weapon, most likely a sword. The stone tray, as well as the forehead and nose of the statue, are chipped and scratched. Hmm. Uh, it is approaching... It is post 11 o'clock here on the East Coast. I don't know how long your streams go for nowadays. The but same. We could we could we could pause here. If, if here's where you guys would like to pause in front of this grand stone statue, we can call it here. And I say we do that because I don't even know what we should do here. Maybe we need to think about if we want to put anything on this and this requires a little of a little this thought. Fire, a little, a little thought. But Vogos might just throw a fit and, you know, just topple the statue statue over anyway. You mean solve it in my own way? <laughs> I was going to try and take the gems out of the eye, for the eyes. They look very pretty. Yeah, I'm sure that won't have any repercussions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always take the stuff from the statues. I wanted As, to check out the silver tracks on the walls and ceiling. Those sounded interesting. Well, uh, we can call it here, I think. Uh, we've got plenty more of the Shrine of Tomoa Shan to explore. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications on all the things Tabletop Bob and uh, more Tomoa Shan in two weeks. Um, don't forget to check out Michelle in her D&D adventures over on Dungeons and Wellness. That's right. That's, Thank you for the shout out. Of course. Don't forget to check pocket. out Estelle on Twitch. Breakfast King doing yep. great art and gaming. Uh, don't forget to check out Andrew on the Tabletop Bob Rhyme of the Frost Maiden playlist. And Dexter will be back next week. And Bob is on everything else in the channel, so he'll he's <laughs> this is his whole thing. So he's in everything. Well, here. we see you. Uh, well, we'll see Bob on the tabletop. You stay classy, San Diego. And thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching, everybody. Last last one thing though before I know I'm gonna mess your sign off up no, up here fine. but but uh, uh one thing too I, all those things you just said the links will be in the description I'll put them in right now after oh. we close here and then every other time I could just copy and paste them in and I'll I'll make sure that they're in for the for the remainder of the session. Also check out my channel CJ does where I does cool things I forgot to shout out my own channel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're just such a generous and giving DM, you know. Trying to mm -hmm. let everyone else. And get thank their you, stuff. CJ, because this is fun. I get to be on the other side yes. of here. Being on the other side, it's so much fun being on this side too. Uh, when I get to be, uh, there's so many things. It's like, oh. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> now you know how I feel. <laughs> every time. Oh, I know. Just like, <sighs> well, thanks everybody for watching. And come back here in two weeks for more of this. Come back next week for uh, other stuff. All the stuff. All the stuff. All the stuff. Thank you. Keep on the borderlands. That's what. <laughs> See on you the on the board. tabletop. Bye, everybody.